Now, at first I was kind of skeptical about this because there's no on-prem controller with the cloud series. All right, what are we doing here today? We are here to talk about these guys. These guys sent me a box full of stuff. Ingenious is another OEM of networking hardware, security gateways, access points, switches, uh, power distribution units, which is kind of cool. They've got smart PDUs. Ingenious reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in checking out some of their hardware. So they said they were going to send me some of the fit line of network gear, which is their small office or home use uh, flavor of series of networking hardware. Well, I guess that was a little harder to come by than they originally thought as far as getting a review sample out to me. So they sent me some devices from their cloud line, which is the medium like SMB to enterprise space series that they offer, which is pretty cool. So what did I get? I got a Wi-Fi 6E access point. This is the ECW336 managed access point. It's power over ethernet, tri-band indoor AP. Pretty cool. It's it's hefty, it's not super fat like some of the old Cisco's used to be, but it does feel sturdy. I don't know, it feels like a Meraki. You know, you know, you know, oops. And then they also sent me an eight port PoE switch. So this is, uh, they sent me the ECS 1112 FP. That's Echo Charlie Sierra 1112 Foxtrot Papa. Eight ports, RJ45, all eight are power over ethernet. That's nice. Two RJ45 uplinks and then two SFP uplinks. This is a complete one gig switch, so there's no 10 gig or anything built in on here. Now, I haven't plugged these in yet. We're gonna do that together for the first time. So what I have done is downloaded the Ingenious app. They've got QR codes all over their documentation and on their website and stuff for you to get quick, easy access to download their app. Now, at first I was kind of skeptical about this because there's no on-prem controller with the cloud series. There is with the Fit series, which is kind of odd to me because I would have expected to see a physical network controller option in the enterprise line opposed to the home business, you know, Soho series. I would think they would push those to rely on cloud first. I was kind of skeptical because I like to host my own stuff, but I went ahead and got, got signed up with it anyway, and it's pretty intuitive, very unify looking. So you would go to cloud.ingenious.ai and get prompted with their login screen. The app is ingenious to go or something like that. So the app is super easy to utilize, really. You can create an account with like an email address or if you are a partner, like an MSP with Ingenious, they have an MSP model, which is pretty cool. They've also got Google authentication, so you can just log in with your Google creds. And there you go, it creates your account for you. I had already created the account, so I went through all the steps in, in building the account on the website. It's as simple as hitting the plus button in the bottom of, uh, of the section there, and it's register a new device. And then you just scan a QR code. That's as easy as it is to adopt the devices into the network. With Unify and TP-Link, you plug them in and it has like a discovery process where it goes through and looks for a ping or some kind of call home within the network that your controller is in. But because this is a cloud managed, cloud only managed controller, you have to adopt it this way. Anyway, super intuitive and very quick and easy to do. I really like that. I could see this coming in handy where customer buys device, ship it to your MSP or to your IT director or whatever. All they do is boop, adopt it to the network. And I bet you it can go a step further than that. I bet you whoever the distributors are for these can send you the serial numbers as they ship. You can ship these directly to the, the site, to the remote site or home office or whatever. Whoever is ordering the hardware can get the serial numbers over to IT director and they can just input them into the dashboard so that it's already set up, templates are applied, all you know level one guys gotta do is plug everything in. So we've got a dashboard, which is this main page here. We can manage our access points from here. So once you adopt your AP or your switch or your gateway or any of your devices into your network, they'll show up here. So we've got access points, uh, manage switches, 
gateways, uh, the topology. So this is pretty much what it you know looks like at most of the other controllers as well, network controllers. Uh, but that definitely comes in handy. You can create building plans, and uh, if you've got multiple sites throughout the country or throughout the world, this can drop pins, you know, in all the places that you have all all your devices, you know, located in your different remote sites. Um, I don't have a gateway, or definitely don't have two gateways to test the VPN features. But similar to the TP-Link, they have VPN built into the devices. So if you've got a hub and spoke where home base has your primary core network stack and then you've got remote offices at the edge throughout the country or whatever. You've got your VPN tunnels back to your primary applications which are on prem at, you know, HQ at your home base. That's all built in to the devices. They have a map here and this is the pro feature. So we'll talk about that here in a little bit. You can go through and configure all the things like your SSIDs and the different radio outputs for each appliance or each access point. Set up all your settings in the switch guy, you know, switch configurations, your ACLs, all that stuff. Gateway, same thing. You can do your site to site VPN or even client VPN. That's interesting. Hold on. What client VPN apps work with this? Oh, so it goes over IPsec and your PDUs. There can be templates here. Anyway, so we, we keep seeing this, this, uh, this pro feature, this pro tag. Here. What does that mean? Let's take a look at that. There's two tiers here of licensing for these appliances. And TP-Link, Unify, some of these small business and home networking OEMs don't typically go down the licensing path. That's, that's an enterprise thing. So don't get it twisted. These are made for large enterprise setups, but there's a little bit of a difference. These right out of the box have a basic plan, which means they're gonna function, they're gonna work, they're gonna pass layer two traffic, they're gonna do bare minimum stuff that you would expect out of a switch and an access point. Can't speak to the gateway because I don't have it. You can upgrade from there at an additional cost per year or per, per three year, which is pretty standard when you're looking at enterprise class hardware. Before we dive into the licensing, one thing I did wanna bring up as well is contents in the box. The access point comes with the access point. The switch, on the other hand, comes with, I think it comes with the networking cable. I might have already taken it out of the box. Power plug, of course. This is pretty nice. It does come with a classic console cable. So if you have an RS-232, you know, plug on your laptop or adapter that you use for consoling into things like Cisco, comes with it. That's nice. This switch is a little bit smaller than a full-size 2960X or whatever, the full-size 19-inch 1U rack but it comes with extended ears and then extend it long enough that you can actually put it into the rack slot. Nerd! Hey, I thought that was interesting. So talking about licensing now, if you've ever dealt with any type of enterprise hardware, Meraki is a perfect example, Cisco, Fortinets, Ruckus, I think Ruckus, you're gonna deal with a license most of the time it enhances another tier of features as well as extended support depending on an SLA that you want or service level agreement, say next business day replacement, things like that. These looks like it's just a feature upgrade to go from the basic plan to the pro plan. Good news, right out of the box, these devices come with a year of the professional plan. You can also keep them on basic and just plug it in and they pass layer two traffic. I'll leave links for all of these down in the descriptions and you can go through and check what comes with the basic plan versus the professional plan. I don't know the cost. They don't have anything in here of like MSRP or suggested retail price. All right, I'm gonna go plug these in now and see if we can start transmitting. We'll be right back the next day so here we are it's the next day so i plugged in the switch to my compute network which is its own vlan then i plugged in the access point to the switch right to get power over ethernet it wouldn't connect wouldn't connect uh so i ended up taking it and putting it on my primary network and after about 15 minutes it finally adopted and was picked up by the cloud controller rebooted the switch rebooted uh probably two three times and then finally the access point connected as well and 
they both showed up on the dashboard. Let's take a look at that. You can see our switch, we can see our access point. Now we can go in and make changes. Uh, we see the ingenious Wi-Fi SSID, the different radios that are in place for 6E, Wi-Fi QR code, that's kind of cool. Yeah, available networks and Genius Wi-Fi. So it definitely doesn't have a password on it. It's wide open. You don't want to do that. And we'll hit apply. That way at least we've got some type of password on, on our Wi-Fi while we're playing around with this. Uh, you know, all the things you would expect to do with a wireless controller. Switches, systems and protocols. Yeah, there's not much here. This is pretty cool. You can put a picture. So say this switch and access point are at a remote location that's a shared office. You can take a picture of your switch, probably more than one picture, and your access point. When somebody else using the app goes to that site, they can look up and see that exact switch that they're looking for. We could configure port number one, which is incoming actually. So let's just change that and do like port number three since it's not, oh, it's not populated yet. I can't do anything with it. Oh, yes, I can. We could label the port, we could disable it all together, uh, we could dedicate a VLAN to it. That's what I'm talking about. That's nice. So you do have some limited logging here um, with the basic license. So let's find our access point. How can we apply the license? There's not anywhere that explicitly says apply a license to it now. I've had problems trying to find the damn thing. Oh, inventory and licenses. Okay, so if we went to access points and checked pro, Let's try that and hope we don't break it. Now, if we go to configure, what was locked down as a pro feature? Smartcast. Yeah, see, okay. Uh, looks like that's all you have to do to enable pro licensing. I'm glad we found that. So if you're interested, that's how you do it. There's a lot of advanced features here, some of which are behind a paywall, which I'm not really a fan of for home users, but these are geared towards enterprise class customers or consumers. So I guess I could understand that. I would be interested to know if that pro feature set also comes with an escalated tier of support, like a pro support or a, you know, a smart net type of offering, or if it's literally just features that, that you get. When it comes to price, you're definitely paying for enterprise gear here with this, with this specific line. Let's sum this up. Ingenious has a pretty good network system here. It's easy to use, it's intuitive, it makes sense. If you've used other devices before, it's very similar to a lot of those. And this is becoming a norm, it's becoming a standard to have these kind of features available to you. Some of them behind a paywall, Okay, fine, but you do get a very user-friendly interface. You get a very user-friendly uh, mobile app that you can assign multiple users to access and one year of pro licensing upfront for net new hardware purchases is pretty nice. You don't see that very often. And if that's by default and not just some special they're running. So this specific gear is great for what it is. Would I recommend it for a home network? Not necessarily, that kind of goes back to the cost. Really, these aren't designed for a home network. You absolutely can use it for sure. If this is what you got or you have access to, fucking go for it, it's a pretty good system. But $900 for an access point, unless you have cutting edge stuff that's running on Wi-Fi 6E, you need extended coverage, or you need to get connectivity to lots of clients which typically you're not gonna find in a home environment. So what's the verdict? If you're ready to take your network to the next level, this might be an option or an opportunity for you. None of this was sponsored. Nobody paid me anything to talk about any of this. Uh, they did provide these devices free of charge to me. They said, here, check it out. Let me know what you think. If you got this far in the video and you learned something today, hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. If these are the kind of videos that you like to watch. Consider subscribing to the channel for more like it. And of course, thanks for watching.